Hey game developers, Bilal from Zenfinity.net and welcome to another Unity tutorial. And in this one we're going to be creating a power-up system that allows us to stack the duration of the power-ups that we grab. And we're really going to be avoiding using any stringy code with references all over the place because we want this to be really easy to build upon or to add new power-ups to. So how this is going to work is we're going to have a power-up controller that has a list of power-ups that can spawn randomly. Now in this video we're going to be testing just creating power-ups which are going to be game objects with a power-up behavior attached to them and the power-up behavior will have a reference to our power-up class. Now in the power-up class we're going to have some actions that will have a start and end and that's really going to be the driving factor of what's going on here. So with that said I think we can just go ahead and get started. First I'm going to create uh, these scripts down here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and hit create C-sharp script and this is going to be the very first one just called the power up. Now uh, this is not actually going to be a mono behavior. This is going to be a regular class here. So in Unity if you're not familiar with a, what a mono behavior is, it's what allows us to attach this as a component to a game object and it allows us to run these Unity built-in functions. Okay, so I'm going to delete this mono behavior inheritance and I'm going to just add in all of these different attributes that we need uh, for the power up so that we can have all the information ready. So first I'm going to type serializable at the top here and uh, Visual Studio is going to give me a little error so I'll hit this quick actions and refactorings here uh, and we just need to be using system at the top here because it belongs to that namespace. Okay, so now I'm going to type serialize field and we're going to be putting an attribute here. So this is going to be a public string name. Okay, um, and so I'm going to be doing the same thing for um, a duration. So public float duration. And then we're going to have a start action and an end action here, which are both going to be unity events. Okay, so I'm going to type public unity event and now we're going to have to include another namespace. So I'll hit control period in Visual Studio to bring up uh, this quick actions menu that'll allow me to um, just inject uh, using Unity engines.events here. Okay, so now this is going to be called the start action. Okay, and I'll do the same for an end action. And these two are going to need this serialize field tag here. Okay. And so what this serialized field tag is doing here is because this is not a mono behavior, we can't attach it to um, any uh, game object, and by default, in, if you have a power-up typed attribute inside of a component, uh, it will not show up to be visually edited in Unity. We need to put serialized field here to ensure that um, all of these will show up as you know serialized fields inside of the power up and we put serializable here so that the power up can be changed in the inspector in the first place okay so moving on why don't we go ahead and create um, our functions for calling start and end right so I'm gonna make a public void end and this will be if uh, end action is not equal to null and we'll do end action uh, dot invoke and all this is doing is running the end action so if you're not familiar with what unity events are uh, basically we're going to be able to in the inspector um, put a function inside of this unity event one or more functions um, and then it will be called whenever we uh, call it which over here invoking is how we're calling it so if I were to call this end function our everything inside of the end action would be called Okay, so moving on, I'm going to go ahead and create our start function. So over here, I'm just going to replace all this with start, start action. Um, okay. And this is going to be called start, of course, to be respective start. Okay. Um, and obviously, you might be thinking, well, mono behaviors have the start function, but of course, this isn't a mono behavior, so we won't have any override issue there. Perfect. Okay, so that is everything about our power-up class. Um, and these are only going to be used to be stored inside of our power-up behaviors. And we'll have a list of them in our power-up controller for if we want to randomly spawn power-ups. Okay, perfect. So why don't we go ahead and move on to 
I guess, why don't we create our power up action script? And what a power up action script is, uh, is that it's going to be kind of a reference, right, for our other scripts to know what a power up can do, right? So uh, we're going to be creating power ups solely in the inspector. So once we create a power up, we're going to want to assign, like I said before, those events, uh, some functions. And to do that, uh, we're going to need to actually write the functions inside of a mono behavior so we can drag them into the inspector. OK, so why don't we go ahead and move on with creating a, another C Sharp script. This is going to be called um, Power Up Actions. OK, so I'm going to double click that and open it up. Hopefully, Visual Studio will ask me to reload as it does. OK, uh, so now I have Power Up Actions here. And this time, we're going to be leaving the mono behavior. OK, uh, and I don't need any of these functions here. OK, so we're going to have, um, well, I'm going to write serialize field here. And we're going to have a uh, player controller here, which I'm going to comment out for now. Actually, uh, no, this is already created. Uh, this will be included in the starter kit. Uh, so um, you don't have to worry about writing that. The player controller is just a basic. Um, control that that accepts vertical and horizontal axis input for moving up and down or up and down and left and right basically so yeah just don't worry about that for now but uh, make sure we write it in here okay so public void um, this is going to be high speed start action because uh, the first power up we're going to be making is going to be a high speed one uh, so we're going to have both its start action here and its end action so you can probably guess what I'm going to write here and action. Okay. And what I'm going to do here is actually just modify our player controller. Now, since the player controller is already written, and I'll go ahead and navigate to it to give you a quick preview, um, here's everything that's going on, right? So we have um, just input names, and then we have uh, just component references. This is only per, uh, for performance, so we don't use get component. And then uh, these are just the speed values. OK, so moving down, we have a fixed update here, which sets our velocity to a movement based on our input axes. So these will be called from um, uh, WAST, basically. So vertical axis is W and S, horizontal axis is A and D, and some other keys will also uh, respond to, this, to these axes by default. Um, they are the vertical and horizontal names. OK, um, and yeah, so that's everything that's going on here. Then we just calculate the movement. Um, actually not even calculate, we just uh, store it into a vector 3. And yeah, I guess we do a multiplication here, just so that we move by a speed factor. Um, and yeah, then we just set the uh, velocity equal to the movement. OK, so why don't we go ahead and go back to our um, power of action script here. And what I'm going to do here is write player controller dot speed, and I'm going to multiply this by 2. OK, so there we have, this is uh, in effect like the core of a power up, right? So a power up changes a value uh, to do something, right? Um, and here our value is getting multiplied by two. And so, of course, in our end action, we're going to want to reset that. So, how we do that is player controller.speed is going to be equal to player dot, uh, controller dot, uh, default speed. So, the default speed never changes except for in the inspector, hopefully. Um, and then this speed will change, obviously, for example, if a power up is called on it or, you know, whatever else is going on in your game that causes that. Okay, perfect. Our power up actions is done for now because we're only going to be doing one power up in this video. However, you can feel free to expand upon this in the future. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and go back to Unity because we're going to create another script. And this one is going to be. I think we'll go ahead and start with our power up behavior here. Okay, so our power up behavior is what's going to drive our power up uh, to actually interact with our player and to actually activate the power up that it stores. So why don't we go ahead and create that script here? This is going to be power up controller, or actually behavior, sorry, behavior. Okay. And reload, of course. OK, so um, let me just open a control T. It should be power up behavior. Yep, OK. So uh, we have start function and updates uh, by default as usual. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is just write in some attributes here. Um, so just go ahead and follow along. 
So to begin with, we'll have another serializable thing here. This is going to be a private uh, power up, power up, and this is of course the power up uh, class or object um, that's going to be you know stored inside of this power up, so that when the player hits this thing, this one will activate. Okay, so now in our um, Actually, I'll make this an awake function. So awake, um, and we're going to, sorry, go ahead and finish up these attributes here. So we'll do private transform, transform. And the reason I do this is just a performance reason. So we're just going to write it here fast, uh, transform equals transform. Because when you actually write transform, it is getting the component transform. It's not actually using a cached uh, reference to it. So uh, this way we cache it so we don't constantly use get component. Okay, uh, so now we'll do the same thing for a renderer. Private renderer. Oops, renderer. Renderer. Um, and this is the same thing basically. Okay, um, and actually uh, we might not even need this for now, but uh, it's there now, so <laughs> it's staying. Okay, and uh, the last thing is something I'm going to comment out. It's going to be the public power up controller and this is going to be the controller okay and this is going to be the uh, you know driving factor of the actual logic behind stacking our power-ups and uh, running them etc okay so moving on why don't we go ahead and delete our update function and I'm going to create a, an activate power-up function and a, uh, a set power-up function so we'll do private void activate power-up and this is going to do controller oops, dot um, activate power up, which is code we're going to write later. This will not work for now, so I'm going to comment it out. Okay, um, and now we can go ahead and write our set power up function. So public void set power up, and this is going to be power up, power up. So what we're going to do is this dot power up equals power up. Like you would in a constructor, and then game object dot name equals power up dot name. This is mainly for debugging, so that you can uh, look through your hierarchy and see um, all your different power ups. So, say you have a power up called high speed, you'll see all the high speeds are obviously going to be respected to their power up, and then, for example, like two times multiplier um, and so on will all be respective to the power up stored inside of their attribute here. Okay, so those are the two functions we're going to write there. And now finally I'm going to write a, um, an on trigger enter function to actually interact with our player here. So on trigger enter uh, collider other. And we're going to write uh, if other dot game object dot tag is equal to player. This is just a fast way of checking if we hit the player rather than something else. Um, in your game you might have different objects than just one that can activate a power up. Um, but for this case, I know that I'm only going to be using uh, one character, so I don't mind um, checking this tag because I know only the player is going to have the tag and only he needs to activate power ups. Okay, so what we're going to do is call activate power up and then we're going to set uh, the power ups game object here to false so that the player only grabs it once. Okay. Now this is actually everything for our uh, power up behavior, and I'm sorry about adding that renderer. I'll go ahead and delete that. Um, and yeah, okay. So why don't we go ahead and go back to our um, power up controller now, and we need to actually create that first. So I'm going to Unity, and I'm going to hit C sharp script, and this is going to be our power up controller. Okay, and this is where a lot of the meat in the power up system is going to be. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up, and now we have an empty power up controller. Okay, so power up controller is going to have a whole bunch of attributes, um, and um, they're all going to be used for uh, referencing the list of power ups that are active, the list of power ups we can spawn, and so on, right? So I'll go ahead and start here with public game object. This is going to be the power ups prefab. So power up prefab. Okay, and then public list of power ups. These are all the spawnable power ups here. Okay, and then now we'll have a public dictionary of power ups and then floats. 
this is active oops active power ups equals new dictionary power up float I'm gonna put the parentheses at the end and that's uh, that's all done for that so I'll go ahead and write uh, private list power up keys equals new list power up okay um, and that's all those uh, attributes actually yeah those are all the attributes we're going to need so now we're going to go ahead and move on to writing functions so uh, I'm going to go ahead and begin with I'm going to go ahead and begin with I think our spawning a power up here so I'm going to go ahead and write public game object spawn power up and this is uh, going to return a game object because we're going to be creating a power up um, I don't think we're going to be referencing the return value in this one uh, during the tutorial, but in the future it can help, um, you know, for whatever reason. So I'm going to go ahead and write power up, and then vector three uh, position. Okay. Uh, oh, there's an S at the end. Uh, okay, and so why don't we go ahead and start with writing game object power up game object equals instantiate power up prefab. Okay, and so that makes an instance of the power up. Um, not the most efficient way, but it's uh, going to be sufficient uh, for this case here. So what I'm going to do is now write return power up game object uh, just to make the compiler stop complaining, and then I'll write in the uh, meet in between here. So I'm going to write var uh, power up behavior equals uh, power up game object dot get component uh, power up behavior because uh, this physical prefab is going to have a power up behavior attached to it before we actually spawn it in okay um, and I'll write power up um, behavior dot controller equals this okay um, and then we'll write power up behavior dot set power up uh, to this power up and sorry, this part's kind of boring, <laughs> but uh, we're just writing in uh, all the references that this game object is going to need here. So uh, bear with me. This is the last line that we'll need. Okay. Um, and that's everything that we're going to be doing for our spawn power up. And I'm going to go ahead and go back to our power up behavior script here. I'm going to go uh, hit F12 on this. Um, and then over, oh yeah, we want to uncomment this. So we have a uh, public power-up controller controller, and now the controller gets set over here with no compiler errors. Okay, and that's perfect. So now we want to have a uh, function for activating a power-up, right? So let's write public void activate power-up. I'll we'll do power-up power-up. Okay. Um, and so what we're going to do here is first we're going to check if the active power ups contains a key um, and if it does contain the key uh, then we're going to add on to that power ups duration otherwise we're going to be adding the power up to that um, library or sorry that dictionary <laughs> and then um, we're going to be uh, putting the duration in as the value here so I'll go ahead and write that to make it a kind of visual thing, and then we can talk about it a little more. Okay, so if not active uh, powerups.contains key power up. Oops. Um, then what we want to do is write power up dot start so that we do the start action. Then we start ticking here. So active powerups dot add power up. And then power ups dot uh, sorry power up dot duration. Okay, um, so there. So yeah, if we if this is not already in this dictionary over here, and so I'll go ahead and actually visualize the dictionary. This is a dictionary of power up and float. And if you do not know what a dictionary is, uh, it's also called a hash or a hash table um, or a map. You know, depending on whatever language it is you're using. Uh, obviously, in Unity you're pretty much only using C-sharp, but in general, uh, it's a common thing in, uh, in programming. 
Uh, but basically what a dictionary does is it lets us store something by a key and a value. So we can go ahead and index in constant time uh, to grab some value here. So for example, if we have a high speed power up in here and its duration was five, we could go in the dictionary and look up the duration of our lasting uh, high speed power up. So then I could see, oh, our high speed power up still has five seconds, so we should keep uh, ticking down. Okay, so with all that said, uh, let's go ahead and write the next part here, which is an else. So else, oops. Uh, we want to write active power ups of power up plus equals the power up dot duration. So this is the uh, effect stack that we're going on here is we're just going to be adding on to the duration uh, of our power up. So if we pick up two high speed power ups, then our duration is going to be twice as high as if we were to pick up one. Okay. Uh, and now at the end of this activate power up, we're going to do keys equals new list power up active power ups dot keys. Now, if you're unfamiliar with dictionaries, this part is just going to be very weird, um, but I'll explain as best as I can. What we're doing here is um, we're storing the keys in this separate uh, list here. Uh, which is supposed to be all the keys inside of this dictionary. The reason why we do this every time we activate a power up is because we're always adding on a new key to our dictionary. But the problem is when we're doing this iteration loop here, uh, about, about the iteration loop where we actually uh, tick down the time or the duration of our power ups, uh, we're going to be removing some power ups from the dictionary. And we don't want to be iterating over the same um, list or dictionary that we're removing from because that will actually throw an exception. Uh, so what we're going to be doing instead is iterating over the keys and removing from the dictionary. Then if we were uh, to have changed something inside of that iteration loop, we will then um, appropriate the keys afterward. So sorry, that's kind of a mouthful and probably uh, something you know, difficult to understand if you're totally new. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and write it and then maybe visualizing it will help out. So why don't we go ahead and write our handle global power ups function. And I'm actually going to change the name from global to, I'll just say active power ups. So like handle active power ups. And this is of course void, sorry. Uh, and there's no uh, parameters or anything. And so what this is going to do is, uh, this is pretty much the power up loop here. So I'll go ahead and start here. So first I'm going to have a bool changed equals false. This is what I was talking about earlier that's going to be used uh, to check if we have made a change in the dictionary. Okay, so if active power ups dot count is greater than zero, and active power ups is our dictionary here. Um, so if this is empty, or sorry, if this is not empty because we're doing greater than zero, uh, then what we want to do is active power ups of power up. Oh, sorry, we actually want a for for each here first, so I'll delete that and I'll write uh, for each power up power up in keys. Uh, we want to check if active power ups of that power up is greater than zero. So if this power up is uh, has a duration that's lasting uh, over zero, then what we want to do is remove from the duration here in real time. So power ups, uh, power up minus equals time dot delta time. So we reduce the duration by the change in time since the last tick. Okay, uh, and then we do an else here. So if we do not have any time left, what we're going to do is write changed true because we're going to be uh, removing from the dictionary here. Um, then we're going to write active power ups dot remove power up. And like I said before, since we're removing here, uh, we're iterating over the keys, not the dictionary, so we don't get that exception and we can just go ahead and update it afterward. So I'll write power up dot end. Okay. So if we run out of time, then end it. If we still have time, then make the duration tick downward until we don't have time. Okay, and now at the end of our function, we're going to check if changed is true. So if we edited the dictionary, if we lost a power up, then we want to refresh our keys so it knows we no longer have that power up that we lost inside of the dictionary. 
That way, when we iterate, we don't have any sort of uh, error, right? So active powerups dot keys. Okay, uh, and what this is doing is um, just taking in the keys and copying the list from the keys of the dictionary, which is all the powerups, like I said before. Okay, perfect. So we have our handle active powerups done. So what we want to do is just call this every frame in update. Of course, you'd only want to be doing this while the game is running, uh, but in our case, the game runs when we hit play. In your case, your game might run when you hit, um, you know, play inside of a main menu or something. Uh, so bear, uh, keep that in mind. Okay, so now we can go ahead and I think we can actually just go ahead and try uh, doing some of this stuff here. So to begin, I'm going to go ahead and open up Unity here. And uh, I have this little box here that's supposed to be my power up. Uh, so this guy here. So I'm actually going to go ahead and recreate him just for the sake of, uh, you know, if you're unfamiliar with some 3D settings in Unity. So I'll create a new cube here, actually, uh, 3D object cube. Um, and I'm just going to look at the values here. So we had this guy at Y75, and all of his scales were 0.5. Okay. And uh, it's the obstacle material, so I'll go ahead and look in my materials. I'll drag the obstacle onto him, um, and I'll rename him Power Up. Okay, delete this one. Uh, and this is a trigger because our uh, player is a collider, and for a collider and trigger to hit each other, uh, well, actually, for a trigger to trigger, it has to be hitting something else that is not a trigger. Sorry if that's too many triggers in one sentence. Okay, so why don't we go ahead and add uh, our power up behavior here? Power up behavior. Okay, um, and I'm actually not going to uh, be spawning in power ups just yet. We're just going to be testing a power up on our power up behavior uh, script here. So I'm going to go ahead and drag actually um, a power up controller into here. But first, we need to go ahead and create the empty object to hold one. So I'll hit create empty and I'll name this the power up controller. And I'll go ahead and hit add component um, power up controller. Okay, and I'll go ahead and drag a power up here. So let's go ahead and grab our power up guy and drag him into our uh, project view to make a prefab. And then I'll put that in our uh, power up controller for the future. Okay, so. Our power up needs a start action and an end action. It needs a name and a duration. So I'll put in five for the duration. I'll name this high speed. And for our start action and end action, we're going to be referencing this, uh, where is it, uh, power up action script here. So I'll drag this onto our power up controller. Now we can see power up actions is here. And finally, I'm going to drag our player into player controller. It'll grab that script so that the power up actions knows which uh, speed to update. Okay, so now in our power up, let's go ahead and hit the plus here on start action, and we'll see a lot of stuff going on here that might look weird. I mean, runtime only is given, so leave that on, uh, because we don't want these actions to be called uh, while we're doing stuff in the editor. And I'm going to go ahead and hit this little circle here so we can look through um, our game objects, and we see we want to click scene here instead of assets, and then we'll see... Um, I believe we want the power up controller here, so I'll go ahead and double click that. And then for the function, I'm going to click here and we'll see a drop down. And we'll see our power up action script. You'll see a bunch of functions here, but we want our high speed um, start action here under start action. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that again for our end action. But instead of using the circle, I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop this time to show that it's a little easier. Uh, and then for the function, we'll go to power up actions and hit end action. Okay. Perfect. So now we have a power up here. Uh, but finally, I'm going to go ahead and drag our power up controller into the reference here. Uh, normally, if a power up is getting spawned, this will be updated through script. But for now, we're going to do it through the inspector uh, just to test it without uh, worrying about spawning. OK, so why don't we go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and check our scripts really quick to make sure that everything's well. Uh, so activate power up controller to activate power up. So when we pick this power up up, we should hit uh, this function, which should go over here to activate power up, which in our power up controller uh, should. Uh, oh, this is actually this is the one we want. So I'm going to go to power up controller, 
uh, and then we see we should activate a power up, and so it should add it to our dictionary, and then our dictionary should handle all this stuff here in our update function, and that looks like all the uh, references are set up right. So I'll go ahead and put that back where it was. Okay, so right before testing, we actually want to go to our power up behavior script here uh, and uncomment this activate power up uh, code here, and then once we hit play our player will be able to move into the cube and then move uh, double time speed uh, for five seconds and then it'll stop. Okay, so what if we wanted our um, you know, our game, uh, our sorry, our power-up controller to spawn power-ups on its own and then uh, have our uh, power-up stack, right? So why don't I go ahead and first create the high-speed uh, power-up over here uh, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, put all these values here into our power-up controller. So we have a list of power-ups, and I'll change the size here to 1. And element 0 uh, is going to be high speed again. And then the duration will be 5. And uh, I'll put a plus here, and this will be our uh, controller again. And we can actually just do that once more. Okay, so our function for power up actions here will be uh, start, and then uh, power up actions end. Okay, so we have our high speed again. Now we just want to uh, actually spawn the power up somehow. So what I'm going to do is just bind a button to spawning our power ups. Uh, but before doing that, I'm going to go ahead and hit apply on this prefab, and then I'll delete it from the scene. Okay, so now our power-up controller has that prefab still, so let's go ahead and go to our power-up controller. And let's create a quick update check here for spawning a power-up. Uh, so why don't I first decide, this, this position here is about 2.8 and, see, so yeah, I will say 3, we'll say 3 and 0.75 and negative 3. Okay, so let's go ahead and in our update function, check if I hit the key, uh, I don't know, what's a good key? T, I guess. So if input dot get key down uh, key code dot T, then what we want to do is spawn a power up at, um, well, first we want to do, let's do power ups of zero for now because we only have one power up, so we know which one that is. Uh, in the future, you'll just want to use a random dot range between zero and uh, power ups dot count minus one. Okay, so for now, let's go ahead and write uh, that vector 3 here. So new vector 3, we'll do 3, 0.75f, uh, and then uh, negative 3. Okay, so now whenever I hit T, we'll spawn a power up in the same position. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, hit play here. And I'll hit T. We see a power up. I'm going to drag it over so it doesn't get in the way here. Um, so let's see. Click this guy. Drag him over. And I'll go ahead in the game and hit T again. Okay, and so now what should happen is I should be able to run into this one and then this one. Uh, and my duration should change to 10. And uh, so let's just see if that happens. Okay, and it looks like I'm going high speed for 10 seconds here. And we should see it stop soon, and there it goes. Okay, so so now we have our power-up system that's able to spawn things, um, and we can just grab them, and it'll stack the power-up duration. So all of that's working correctly. Um, so what we did here is, you know, we we made power-up prefab that we can put down, the player can run over. Um, there's only one problem though. It's that if I uh, duplicate a prefab here. Uh, so if I were to drag two of these in, they would not stack as they would if they were spawned from the um, actual power-up controller here, because this is the same power-up, and if we just pass this power-up to all our power-ups, uh, then the effect will stack. So just keep that in mind. Um, this power-up will match with itself, but it will not match with the one that we have stored uh, in the prefab here. Well, not in the prefab, but what we had in the scene. Okay, so with that in mind, yeah, this is everything. Uh, we created a spawn uh, power-up system, um, and in the future, if you wanted to spawn randomly, it'll be, it's not that difficult, you just need to pick a random range of vector threes, for example, um, on this square. 
and then uh, we spawn it wherever we want, and then the player can procedurally grab power-ups. Okay, so that's all for this video, and I will see you in the next one. Have a good day.